50 years of hip hop. 50 years of hip hop from listener power, KEXP. Welcome to 50 years of hip hop. I'm Larry Mizell Jr. And MC is my ambition. This week, Dusty Henry takes us back to 1982 with the track Bam Bam by Sister Nancy. Her story is one of innovation, how Jamaican tradition contributed to hip-hop stylings that are still popular and resonating around the world today. Sister Nancy's story is also one of unrecognized talent, how decades passed before she finally received the recognition she deserved. You might not recall the song by name, but as a listener of this podcast, odds are you've definitely heard Sister Nancy's Bomb Bomb. In fact, I'm sure of it. In 2016, Billboard called Bomb Bomb a strong contender for the most sampled reggae song of all time. Here it is on Lauren Hill's classic, Lost Ones. It is again on Kanye and Rihanna's Famous. Jay-Z pays direct homage to it on his song, Bomb, with Damian Marley. And even the Renaissance queen herself used it. Beyonce interpolated the song when she performed Hold Up during her famous homecoming performance at Coachella. The song's enduring popularity is a testament to the deep bonds between hip-hop and Jamaican music and culture. And while Bomb Bomb appears to be a success story, Sister Nancy went through hell to get here. But before we get there... We need to rewind first, all the way back to the person who inspired this podcast in the first place, Cool Herc. Herc wanted to get people to dance longer, but was having trouble keeping the momentum going with the funk soul records he was playing. At this point, you get it. Herc and his sister threw a back-to-school party at 520 Sedgwick Avenue in 1973 that many people considered to be the birthplace of hip-hop, etc., 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 But, as we've discussed time and time again on this podcast, hip-hop's origins are more complicated and ambiguous than that. Hip-hop as a culture is an amalgamation of events and influences. This is something Herc himself understood well. Herc, a.k.a. Clive Campbell, was born in Kingston, Jamaica, and lived there until he was 12 years old. During those formative years, he was exposed to the power of Jamaican sound systems, a proud tradition dating back to the 1940s. We're talking huge speakers, turntables, and generators that blast music out into the streets. The idea was popularized by Chinese Jamaican businessman Tom Wong who founded the sound system he called Tom the Great Sebastian. In those early days, sound systems were mainly used to play American R&B. But over time, they began to play more and more of the ska and reggae locals were cooking up. At the time, Jamaican radio stations were modeled after the BBC, which refused to play certain genres. This meant you couldn't hear local music on Jamaican radio. That's when sound systems became an act of resistance. Jamaicans would play their music in the streets, and they played it loud. There were two other essential elements of the sound system. There's the selector, the person who's picking the music, usually favoring new sounds. Then you need someone to do the toasting, also called DJing. Toasting was an act of sing-talking over the music, acting as the master of ceremonies, or MC. You might already see where this is going. When Herc was a kid, he grew up around sound system culture. He'd seen firsthand the parties in the streets and at the local dance halls. When his family immigrated to New York in 1967, these ideas were still imprinted on his mind. He'd make his own mini sound system to play in the park, 
like many others did. And at functions like the famous party at 1520 Sedgwick, he toasts over the records and breaks to work the crowd. All this to say, Herc isn't the only Jamaican artist in hip-hop's history. Many of the most famous artists in the culture's legacy come from Jamaican descent. The Notorious B.I.G. Buster Rhymes. Peppa from Salt and Peppa. Uh, here I go, here I go, here I go again, uh, girls. What's my weakness? Yeah. Okay, then chill. And iconic producer Pete Rock. There are so many others, and all of them carry the spirit and influence of Jamaican music and culture in their own way. Beyond just the performers and the advent of sound systems, Jamaican music broadly has continued to influence hip hop. There's maybe no better shining example of this than Bomb Bomb. Which finally brings us back to Sister Nancy. I said, my name is Nancy, I talk with dignity. My name is Nancy, I talk with dignity. And anyway, me go, the people say me ready. Tell me, say some of them say, me have ability. Born Offlin Russell in 1962, Sister Nancy was a rebel from day one. As one of 15 kids in her family, she was quick to buck her parents' conservative values. So much so that she'd run away from home sometimes gone for months. She wasn't alone in her rebellion either. She took inspiration from her brother, Brigadier Jerry, who began DJing in Jamaica's burgeoning dancehall music scene. Nancy herself became a disciple of DJ Junior Chalice. When she was 15 years old, Junior let her take a hand at toasting. This gave her the distinction of becoming the first woman dancehall DJ. She never looked back. She kept performing around Jamaica with various sound systems. It wasn't long before she was approached by producer Winston Riley in 1980. He'd performed with the rock study group The Techniques. Riley already had experience with hit songs. He wrote and produced a track for Dave and Ansel Collins called Double Barrel, which became a number one single in the UK, Netherlands, and Mexico. I am W-O-O-O. And I'm still here Riley caught Nancy performing with the sound system Stereophonic and was impressed by her performance. He approached her and recorded her first single, One Two. The song became a hit in Jamaica, leading Riley to then approach her about doing a full album. The two got back together at Channel One Studios to put together the record. It was named One Two, sharing a name with her hit single. One Two actually ended up being the only album that Nancy ever released. Near the end of production, she needed another song to fill out the album. She'd end up freestyling over Riley's production with what would become her biggest song, Bomb Bomb. So bomb, bomb, bomb. Say one time. For Nancy, it was a throwaway track that she barely recalls recording. And I think that fact only contributes to the unfazed coolness you feel emanating from her on the track. The music video features Nancy prowling on a stage as she performs a song. Beer in one hand, her mic and cigarette in the other. She coolly boasts, This woman, I never trouble no one. I'm a lady, I'm not a man. MC is my ambition. Bomb Bomb makes another spiritual connection with hip hop. It's a clear example of Jamaican sampling culture. When Nancy sings the iconic refrain of Bomb Bomb, she's directly calling back to Toots and the Maytal's 1966 song, also called Bomb Bomb. Sister Nancy dropped 1-2 in 1982, about 40 years ago. In her eyes, the release came and went. It barely made a splash in Jamaica. But, being who she is, Nancy carried on toasting. 
She'd continue to perform regularly around Jamaica before she immigrated to the United States in 1966. She settled in New Jersey and took up a career as an accountant. Even still, she always held a flame for music. Two years later, Nancy was caught by surprise. She was watching the highly acclaimed Hype Williams movie, Belly, when suddenly she heard a familiar voice in the film, her own. Nancy didn't realize that her song had taken on unexpected popularity. After recording one, two, her producer Riley had traveled the world and seen the response the song was getting internationally. But he never told her. At this point, it was 16 years since the original release. 16 years, and she'd never been paid a single penny. In fact, she'd never been paid for the recording. As she told the magazine Fader in 2018, back in the days, they don't pay you. You just want your voice to be heard. You just want to hear your record play on the radio, and you feel good. Nancy tried to contact Riley, and even tried to meet up with him in 1998. She says she waited in her car for 12 hours but he never showed. She claims that she did copyright her 1-2 album, but that Riley removed Bomb Bomb from the album, leaving her without the royalties from her biggest song. Frustrated, Nancy kept performing and living her life. Meanwhile, more and more artists continued to sample her song without paying her. She'd hold her tongue while artists like Chris Brown, Mad Lib, Major Lazer, and countless others continued to sample the song. In 2014, while watching TV, Nancy heard the song again, this time in a Reebok shoe commercial. This was the last straw. Nancy found legal counsel to solve this for good. By this point, her producer Winston Riley was dead. He was killed in his home in 2012, shot in the back of the head. This was after years of similar unexplained attacks on Riley. Before he died, it turns out Riley had given the rights to Westbury Music in England. They were able to work together to give Nancy 50% rights to the song and paid her out for the last 10 years of royalties. While it didn't make up for the 32 years she went without payment for her work, this resolution was life-changing for Nancy. She could finally retire from her job as an accountant. To this day, she's focused on her passion. She still performs, goes on tours, and plays festivals around the world. She's also found a new generation of fans of her music. In late 2022, she teamed up with 24-year-old New York-based rapper Mike for his song, Stop Worry. And earlier this year, she appeared on Janelle Monet's blockbuster album, The Age of Pleasure, toasting over the song, The French 75. Nancy's story has two sides. On the one hand, it's so beautiful how Bomb Bomb continues to inspire generations of artists and deepens the connection between hip-hop and Jamaican culture. On the other hand, it's also a cautionary tale that's all too common. Artists not getting the respect they deserve, or the payout they deserve for that matter. Nancy has more than earned her spot as an innovator in hip-hop, even if she wasn't aware of it throughout most of her career. It's important to give these living innovators their flowers. And cash is nice, too. This piece was written by Dusty Henry. Audio was produced by Roddy Nickpour. Next week, we're celebrating Indigenous Peoples Day with the Aboriginal rapper Briggs. I'm Larry Mizell Jr., and we'll see you next time on 50 Years of Hip Hop from listener powered KEXP, where the MC, I mean DJ, I mean toasting matters. Oh,